they stay there And they say yeah And they say there Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the next edition of Synergy Football Radio this is a playoff edition. You're not going to hear about the season, what happened, what not. We're going to be talking about strictly playoffs. Who's facing who? Who do we think is going to win? And what matchup we think is going to be the best? And, of course, we're going to have our Super Bowl predictions. And once again, we have Recruiter with us. What's up, Recruiter? Not much. Just excited to get this 15th season of playoffs going. And we also have Mr. Official. What's going on? What's happening? What's happening? All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are in playoff mode. We are uh, in the playoffs, and we have some tough matchups that have already happened in the season. Now, let's go run through them. First, we have the Bengals versus the New England Patriots. What you guys got? Who's winning? Who's going to the next round? You know what? I'm, I'm going to go with the home team. I'm going to go with the hot hand. You know, we got a team that's won, I think, six straight in the Patriots. Um uh, you know, very underrated but very powerful offense. You got arguably the, the best quarterback of all time in Tom Brady playing. You got arguably the best tight end in Gronk. You got a speedy wide receiver in Cooks. I mean, it, it's brewing for an upset, if you will call it an upset. When you got the uh, the home team Patriots, I think they're going to take it. Yeah, I'm going to have to disagree with you. You can't you can't go against the Bengals and the coach. We we call him coach for a reason. I was checking out Andy Dalton this season. He might have the best pass interception ratio. I think he had like 35 to like 15. And, and he's always in the running for the Super Bowl. He's always in the championship race. And uh, I, I see him coming away, taking it away from the Patriots. Nice. I don't see the Patriots coming away with a W this week. Well, you can't deny both of them have made some splashes with the tough AFC. And to get to this point is um, uh, a statement um, that that no matter what they were able to get in and they won the respective you know divisions Patriots a little easier division than the the Bengals I would say but still had to win all right moving on to the next one Jags and Ravens go oh this, this one's gonna this one's gonna be a good game these two faced off further in the year Ravens snuck away with a win uh, three points like week five maybe one of the one of the only losses other than in um, divisional game Titans that the Jags lost. I'm, I'm going to have to go with the Jags, though, in this one. They, they're my Super Bowl pick from the beginning of the season. I see them getting revenge over the, the Ravens. I don't think the Ravens are going to have it coming in on a two-game losing streak. His team is not feeling it at the end of the year. I'm going with Jags. I'm going to tell you right now, defense wins championships, and you look at what the Ravens did against the Jaguars in week, what was it, week five, I believe, like you said, week three. 23-20, but they made a crucial red zone stop, which is huge in playoff football. So I'm going to go with the Ravens, 17-14 uh, over the Jaguars. Listen, both of them didn't give up much yards at all, but when it comes to the most yards, it was the Jags. I'm going to have to go I'm gonna have to go Jags just because of it, but it looks like it's the numbers are pretty much even in that last game. It's just, of course, the 200, the total yard gain was on the side of the Jaguars. The turnover ratio were both three and three. So whoever can turn the ball less and, of course, get more yards and better field position, of course, usually wins the game. But you never know. Playoff games are never, never goes as usual. Both All right. the teams are battle-tested in tough divisions. That is true. That is definitely true. All right. And then we have next in the NFC, we have Panthers, Packers. Who you guys got? I'm going to go with the Panthers in this one. I'm going with the away team again. They, I think they're they're my sleeper pick to make it to the Super Bowl. They got a little revenge against the Packers. The Packers beat them a couple weeks ago. And, and Coach Dorian, he studies the teams, and it's hard to beat him twice in a season. He really comes to play after after he loses. He'll, he'll watch that game film. And I think he'll come out with the game plan and come away with a W in this one. Uh, you said that perfectly. I'm going to tell you right now, you, you're not going to see a coach like Dorian turn the ball over four times too many times. You're not going to see a guy like Dorian only rush for 50 yards too many times. So uh, I think the Packers got uh, lucky in weeks 15. Uh, I think that you're going to see a hungry Jaguar, or Panthers team, excuse me, come back and uh, they're going to dominate. They're going to dominate the game, I think. Uh, Panthers, big. Listen, I would have to disagree with both of you, even though I think – that personally, the Green Bay Packers are a douchebag. You can't deny with the numbers. 
You can't deny it with the numbers. He had um, a good rushing game over, you know, a rushing yards, 186. I mean, you got to play defense. Yes, it was, you know, he scored most of his points in the first half. But the Panthers only scored uh, seven in the second half. So he still stopped them on defense. Um, when it comes to defense, towards the end, they were trying to figure us out, uh, trying to figure both of them out. And I understand this is a playoff and this is a big deal, but the turnovers are huge. The Packers don't turn the ball over much. The Panthers might take too many risks and do the same thing. Now, they would have to have with a complete different game plan because what, uh, what they went in week 15, it did not work at all. But I'm going to go with Green Bay Packers, douche all the way. <laughs> it is tough to win in, in Lambeau, but I don't see, I don't see Dorian... You know, it's tough to beat him twice in a year. He'll, he'll study that game, and we'll come back hungry. I don't know if it's going to be a big win. The Packers are a tough team, and they almost came away with the first round by, but I'm going with Dorian. He's my man. Gotcha. And he is coming from a tough uh, tough division. Going, uh, going to the, the league. That's true. Now we're going to go on to the Buccaneers and Rams. Who you guys got? Go. I'm going Buccaneers in a blowout against the Rams. I, I know I placed the Rams. We're in the same division, but... Buccaneers is tough, and I see him coming away with a W against the Rams. He come away. He came in from the toughest division in the league, and, and he, he's wild card with like 12 wins right now. But he could have easily been the number one seed if the cards fell his way. I'm, I'm gonna point something out to you real fast. Let me just tell you right now: this Rams team lost games by three points against a team that is the number two seed, the Redskins. They lost a tight one to the Texans. Only by a touchdown. They lost to the Vikings barely. They lost to the Saints barely. This is a team that could very well be 11 and five. I'm gonna take the Rams in an upset. They got a strong defense. You got a guy like Aaron Donald. You got a beastly front four, Michael Brockers. You got some okay linebackers, Robert Quinn. You got uh, uh, Mark Barron, former safety, and you got some decent players on offense. Don't forget, you got a top five running back in Todd Gurley. Uh, ball control, defense, Rams upset. So you, you said it perfectly, though. He always loses the close games. He can't come away with the win. He, he doesn't know how to, how to uh, nail it in at the end there. He always, he always gives it up. He plays tough. Don't get me wrong. He plays tough, and I, I think he'll play tough. But I just don't think he's going to be able to get that W in, in, against the Buccaneers. Hey, it's the playoffs. Throw away the regular season right out. All those close games don't matter. He won the division, a very shitty division in the NFC West, you know. Win a division, I think, with what six wins. But hey, Beast Quake, who can remember the seven and nine, you know, Saint, uh, Seattle Seahawks going in facing the high-powered offense of the New Orleans Saints, and what they do, ran them right out of town, hosting the game. You're, you're right. LA, LA's getting a playoff game. You're right. The NFL does like a good underdog story. The Rams are definitely the underdog. If they come away, it'll be a huge win. But again, I just don't think he has enough. Bucks play tough. Listen, I agree with everything you guys said. I put my two cents in. Now the Buccaneers are straight off the um, the better team. I mean, better offense, better defense all around. And the Rams have really haven't played him much. But I'll tell you one thing about the Buccaneers: he might get cocky. He happened in our game. He got cocky. He started throwing the ball when he should have ran out the clock, and then cost him the game. I'm not saying that it's going to happen. I'm just saying it could be an upset. You know, plus he he lost to the Panthers in a in a you know in a back and forth game. So if he doesn't bring his defense, I mean he's if you look at um, the scoreboard, he's allowed um, he's won these games, but he's allowed 31 to the Packers. He's allowed uh, 38 to the Lions. These are teams that are way below his um, his record and still allowed them to have this. They allowed 16 against was a good defense against the Falcons, but allowed 54. Uh, points to the Panthers and then his last game against the Saints he allowed 42 points so if he brings that kind of mentality and it goes to a shootout anything could happen very true very true so I look for a good game there it's going to be an early one it's going to be an early one too so so wake up early to watch that game listen we haven't talked about the guys in the bye weeks um we have the Falcons in a bye week um we have the Chargers in a bye week uh, who are the other two? You got the um, the Chargers and the Redskins. Red, oh, Red, no, Redskins. Char- Redskin, okay, sorry, Redskins. Um, we haven't talked about. I'm gonna reverse. I'm gonna do it all over. Cut this out. So we haven't talked about the NF, uh, NFC bye week holders, which you have the Falcons at number one seed, number two seed, the Redskins. I mean, 
what do you guys think about those teams? Well, if the cards fall the way the, the cards fall the way I see it is the Panthers versus the Falcons, and they're one and one in this division. And like I said, Dorian's my sleeper pick, so I'm gonna go with the the Panthers to the championship game. And then it's gonna be if you go with what I pick, it's gonna be the Buccaneers against the Redskins. And I think the Redskins can e very easily be representing the NFC in, in the Super Bowl. So I'm going with Panthers over the Falcons. I'm going with Redskins over the Bucks. And then that championship Redskins but, or Panthers, I can't call it right yet. But that's where I'm going with Panthers and Redskins in the championship. If the cards fall the way I'm calling it now. Okay, official, what do you think? Uh, two words, Samarje P. Rag. This yep. dude rushed it down everyone's throat. 330 totes, 108, almost almost 2,000 yards, 23 touchdowns. I believe that's an NFL record or tied an NFL record, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, only one fumble. That's a key thing right there. Damn. It's not oh, turned all over. 330 carries, one fumble. See, that's, what we have to be, that's what we have to be worried about, too, with the Redskins. We see them as a championship, but they're, they're running the rookie ragged, right? It's the playoffs. He might not be ready for it. Now it could be the time he could be coughing it up. Listen, Look, guys. He uh, might hit that rookie wall. No, he's definitely he's definitely good. And that rookie, I mean, he if he if he controls his pace right in the I mean, it's, but crucial things happen. I've in in another league, a guy was rushing like crazy with Christian McCaffrey in the uh, playoff, uh, the divisional round, right before the NFC Championship. Uh, or uh, he lost it in the NFC Championship. He lost McCaffrey. In the Super Bowl, he couldn't do anything. So you got to make sure you win the game, but also protect your key players because it could hurt you in the further, uh, as further as you go. Now, also, when it comes to the rookie, he does have 99 injury, but he has 87 stamina. That's going to be crucial where he doesn't, uh, like you said, run him ragged. With 87 stamina, is pretty good. But at the same time, after a long run, you can't put him right back in. You're going to have to do a, a, you know, a, a two-headed monster type thing. Yeah, you have to be careful in the playoffs. You do want to make sure that your good players are rested. I agree. The stats are out the window. You're going for the W now. Exactly. And ball control wins games. You run the ball. Yeah. You control the clock. Hey, playoffs, you, you play to win the game. And I'm going to take a team that can, can run the ball all day. You know, I'm old school. So, uh now, now in that other matchup, you know, again, you got a guy uh, who, who has some spread around. You know, you got McCaffrey has 220 carries. You got uh, Stewart with 86. You got Cam, you know, quarterback slash halfback slash tight end beast uh, with 70 carries. A uh, little, little turnovers, uh, but, you know, I, I think uh, it'll be a good matchup. I, too, am going to say Panthers versus Redskins in the NFC Championship, and I won't go any further than that. All right, Watch sounds out. good. Now let's go on to the AFC. Now we have the Chargers and the Titans. Titans number one seed, Chargers number two seed. How do you guys see that playing out? Uh, well, we're living in the Titans world. Um, you know, you got a team that has a number one offense and the number one defense in the league. That's very rare for a team to boast both mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, top offense and top defense uh, in the same calendar year in the game, same same football season year. Um, you know, he, he didn't allow he didn't allow points. He uh, scored him in plenty. Um, and you know, the Chargers. I didn't even realize the Chargers were this good. You know, moving to Los Angeles, I definitely didn't see him as a number two seed. So, uh, I guess you can call them a sleeper pick. Hey, that was my sleeper pick from the beginning. Can you can go to the first radio show. I'll tell you right now, they they went to the Super Bowl <laughs> the last man. This is the first Super. Uh, this is the first playoff game. And this Madden, it's also a, a totally different game. But but um, when it comes to uh, when it comes to the thing, if, if the Jags play Titans again, I think I'm gonna have to give it to the Jags if they even get past the Ravens, because you guys don't even have them past the Ravens. Now I wouldn't look overlook the the um, the Chargers, but when it comes to this ha pass heavy offense, I mean Blake Bortles is killing it. I mean he has 30 touchdowns. I mean he's third in touchdowns, and he only has 19 picks, completing 62%. And he's um, third in, in yardage. I mean, that's a high-powered offense. I mean, I, I don't. I, I'm not sure what the Titans are doing, but the Titans are right behind him. Yeah, I don't I'll think, tell you what I the Jags is doing. He's, he's choking. Uh, you know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, because of technical difficulties, this will be the show for Synergy Football Radio Playoff Push. Stay tuned for next time. And once again, this has been brought to you by GamerGloves.com. You want some Gamer Gloves? Go to GamerGloves.com. No matter what, got money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the building, everybody hands go up.
and they stay there.